In seventh grade, you spent a lot of time looking at proportions, and now we're talking about graphing in eighth grade, and so we're going to join those two together to make one superpower lesson where we graph proportional relationships. And so when two quantities are proportional, they fit on the line y equals mx, and y equals mx passes through the origin, so its y-intercept is going to be 0, 0. Let's look at example one. The cost in dollars for x gigabytes of data on an internet plan is represented by y equals 10x. Graph the equation and interpret the slope. So, so in the um, equation up here, y equals mx, it says that m is the y value of the point that it goes through. And if in this case m is 10, then there are two points that I know on this line. One is the point 0, 0, and the other is the point 1, 10. And that's because I looked up here, and m was 10, so I used 1, 10. So since I'm not graphing any negatives, I'm going to make a big first quadrant. Hopefully you're using a ruler. And now I graph the points. So let's graph 0, 0, and 1, 10. Connect them. Hopefully, again, you have a ruler. That's terrible. and I wrote y equals 10x on the line. The last thing that we have to do to get full credit is interpret the slope. So the slope is rise over run. So let's look at what it is. I'm going up 10, right 1. So the slope is 10 over 1, but I have to say what that means. Now remember, the top number of the slope is your change in the y values, and the bottom number is the change in the x values. So what label goes with y? Because that's what label goes with 10. So look at the question and find me what label goes with y. So the label is dollars. So that means that you pay $10 and then what does the x represent? Because the bottom number of the slope represents your x value. What label goes with the x value? Gigabytes. So that means you pay $10 for one gigabyte. So I use the numbers in the slope and the labels in the question to help me write this um, interpretation. Let's check out example two. The weight y of an object on Titan, one of Saturn's moons, is proportional to the weight x of the object on Earth. So saying the weight on Titan is y and the weight on Earth is x. An object that weighs 105 pounds on Earth would weigh, oops, weight, would weigh 15 pounds on Titan. So remember, slope is the change in the y over the change in the x, rise over run. So the y value is being represented by the Titan measurement, which in this case is 15. The x value, which in this case is the Earth, is measured by 105. So if I can reduce this fraction, then this is the slope. Well, it's actually the slope already, but reduced, it's more understandable. So that reduces to 1 over 7. So the equation is y equals, if that's the slope, then that goes in front of the x, and there's my equation, y equals 1 seventh x. How much would a chunk of ice that weighs 3.5 pounds on Titan weigh on Earth? So remember, Titan is y, and Earth is x. So 3.5 pounds is going to go in for y, and then that I'm just going to substitute it in 
and solve for x. So remember from chapter 1, we drop a line down the equal sign. And how do you get rid of the 1 7th? If you said divide by 1 7th and you didn't learn anything I taught you in chapter 1, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by 7 over 1. And that gives you 24.5 over 1 equals x. So that's 24.5 pounds on Earth. Let's look at the next one. The distance y in meters that a four-person ski lift travels in x seconds is represented by the equation 2.5x. The graph shows the distance that a two-person ski lift travels. So this graph represents two-person ski lift. They give me an equation for a four-person ski lift, but it's not graphed. Which ski lift is faster? Well, the slope of the four-person is 2.5. So if I can find the slope of the two-person, then I can determine which one has a steeper slope, and the steeper slope is going to be moving faster. So the rise is from 4. See, now, for this one, you can't count the boxes because it's going by 2s, so you have to pay attention to the numbers. This goes up from 4 all the way to 12. So although it's technically 4 boxes, it's really up 8. This goes by 1s, so you have to pay attention to the numbers. It's over to the right 4. So the slope of this two-person is 8 over 4, which I will just write as the number 2. So which one's faster? The one with the bigger slope, four-person. Graph the equation that represents the four-person lift in the same coordinate plane as the two-person lift. So right on this graph, I guess I'll erase this. No, I can't. Compare the steepness of the graph. So first we have to include the other line on here. Well, what I learned is that this line will go through the point zero, zero, and it will also go through the point one comma two point five, because that's the slope. So I'll estimate it right here. Compare the steepness. Oh, I guess I should write the equation. Y equals two point five X. Compare the steepness of the graphs. What does this mean in the context of the problem? So the, if the four-person is steeper or it goes faster, what does that mean in terms of the ski lifts? Come up with an answer. My answer is going to say that the four-person ski lift goes faster because the line is steeper. It's not much steeper, right? It's only different than 2 versus 2.5, but I mean, if I had a choice, right, if I was in a rush, I would take the four-person ski lift. So, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me next.